Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So a new day and another round of false copyright takedowns filed by a VTuber agency against a content creator. So over the past month or so, Niji Sanji and their management, Any Color, has been on a warpath to make themselves as unlikable as possible. Now, 2023 has not been a kind year to Niji Sanji. They suspended their talent Zion after she made a list of controversial statements and jokes during her streams. Vox Akuma has taken a leave for personal reasons, and their company has not responded well to these challenges. About two weeks ago, Niji Sanji and Any Color filed 20 false copyright takedowns against the YouTuber Kyo, including four strikes for his coverage of their agency and related news and drama. Today, the YouTuber False ID has reported that he has also received multiple takedowns, including two copyright strikes for his coverage of their agency and their talents. And the backlash is already boiling over, and the hours since he posted his video, Niji Sanji has been trending, and the replies of all their public tweets are being swarmed with criticism, calling out their shady practices. Now, before we get into the details of these latest developments, I want to make a personal message to any members of Niji Sanji's management or members of any color who might be listening to this video. I want to start off by saying, with full respect and sincerity, and I mean full respect and sincerity, you can lick my balls. Like, over the past few weeks, you have proven yourselves to be nothing more than a band of bullies, cowards who are shamelessly exploiting the YouTube copyright system to silence coverage of your talents. These are not the actions of a professional or even confident agency, rather they're the signs of desperation. A company scrambling to censor any coverage of their agency that might shine a negative light on them, no matter if it's public information or clearly fair use. And I guess the stress of any color's stock being at an all-time low has really gotten them rattled over the past few weeks, but sending the reputation of your company into the gutter is not going to make anything better, and people like me will make sure of it. So now that that's out of my system, we need to talk about Niji Sanji, because a lot of people are getting very frustrated with them right now. It's obvious that there is no line of communication between Niji Sanji and the YouTubers that they're striking, and there's obviously no public messages regarding the situation. And right now, their replies are filling up with people calling them out, and I think we're kind of reaching the point where something has to happen. Niji Sanji is going to have to do something, and the more pressure we put on them, the better. So, in case you missed my previous video about this situation, Kyo, a YouTuber who covers VTuber news and related drama, received 20 takedowns on his videos covering Niji Sanji, and this included four copyright strikes. So, in case you don't know, you get three strikes, your channel is at risk for termination. So, they made sure to even get the extra one in there to be even more petty to secure his fate. Now, if you want to look at my previous video for a breakdown of how fair use on YouTube works, you can do that, but I'm not going to waste the time right now. You just have to trust me when I say these are fair use, okay? The, every video they're talking about, fair use, falls under YouTube's policies of fair use, okay? These takedowns are bad. They're wrong. They're wrongful takedown requests. And there is a very common pattern in all of these videos that were taken down. These weren't just neutral stories about updates regarding Niji Sanji talents. The videos they took down were videos that had to do with drama and controversy involving their VTubers. The intents behind these takedowns is very obvious. It was to silence any sort of story that shined a negative light on Niji Sanji members. And Kyo has been in the process of fighting this. I believe all of the related strikes expire at the start of next month. And basically what is happening right now is that Niji Sanji needs to put up or shut up in a legal sense. And they have until a certain period of time to show proof that they're filing legal action against Kyo. And if they don't, all of the related strikes and takedowns will expire and will be restored. So that is the update for now. He has done all the counter notifications and he is simply waiting to see what happens next. Now, this morning, there's been a whole host of drama because False ID has also received takedowns from Niji Sanji. 
His related videos have been struck, and he has now he now has two copyright strikes against his channel, and of course, one away from termination. And in my previous video, like many other people who made this point, if Kyo was going to get takedowns from Niji Sanji, False was next. Like it was pretty obvious. They have very similar channels. They have similar thumbnails, titles. Uh, really the structure of their videos are very similar so it was obvious if one got attacked from uh, attacked by Niji Sanji in any color the other would as well so he made a short video it's about a minute and a half it's very to the point he reports that he has two strikes two copyright strikes filed by Niji Sanji in any color and he is preparing for the worst but filing all the counter notifications and necessary things to do once again Fair use videos, these strikes are falsely made, okay? And I want to point out one thing about false, which was not necessarily the case with Kyo. One of the things that disappointed me with the situation with Kyo is I didn't see a lot of action being taken by fellow VTubers and people in that community. They were relatively silent. Of course, a good number of people spoke out, but not enough, in my opinion. And I think that's because, in this case, false has a much more clear connection to different agency VTubers and independent, large independent VTubers. And I think this one was a huge mistake. It was a huge mistake to strike down Kyo, but striking down False seems like it's going to have a much bigger impact because he has way, clearly way more connections to the VTuber community as a whole, even more than someone like me, like way more than someone like me. So I feel like this is a very golden opportunity for those VTubers who have very big platforms to speak up and say something about this because what's happening with Niji Sanji is not okay. And just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean it doesn't affect the community. It doesn't mean that it's right. And I want to point out because it was the case with Kyo and it's again the case with False. I don't care if you dislike these content creators. I really don't. Um, you can't mix up these issues and excuse the exploitation of the copyright system by a corporation just because you don't like the person it's targeting. It sets a horrible precedent. I do not feel comfortable with a corporation playing judge, jury, and executioner over who gets to have a platform. And I don't feel comfortable with Niji Sanji in any color striking down channels because they cover negative stories about their VTubers and their company. I am not okay with that and neither should you regardless of your feelings about these two individuals. And the, some of the complaints I've seen, I've seen two different things people have said. They have said that they spread false information or had clickbait. Well, guess what? That's not a copyright issue. Okay, that's not a copyright issue. There's other avenues that Niji Sanji and any color would have to take. You don't use the copyright system to combat those things, even if they're true in the first place. And another thing I want to point out is people are saying, well, you violated uh, Niji Sanji's company policies. Well, you can wipe your ass with those policies. They mean absolutely nothing. When it comes to YouTube copyright, they follow their own policies regarding fair use and they look at largely U.S. law, and they'll also consider outside law used by the parties like Japanese law, which is more strict when it comes to copyright. But company policies are worthless. Like, what's stopping me from creating a, the Rev company and saying, it's, it's, we, we don't allow Niji Sanji to strike my videos. Like, it doesn't mean anything. So I don't want to see people defending that. Uh, Niji Sanji by saying their videos violate their company policies. It's it's completely meaningless. So, like I said, there has been a lot of uproar regarding this situation, and you go to the replies of any of their tweets, and people are attacking Niji Sanji, rightfully so. Because, you know what, I think people really need to speak up about this. People have YouTube channels, speak up. VTubers within the community, speak up. And regular Twitter users, feel free to show that Niji Sanji, this is not okay. And that people are upset. And really, this shouldn't stop until Niji Sanji makes some sort of a statement and slash or releases their current claims. Because 
This is a horrible precedent. We need to tell these companies that they can't get away with these things, that they're going to inflict damage on their brand by abusing the copyright system. Their reputation is going to go into the gutter and hurt their bottom line. They are not going to bully people into silence. And I, I've already had a lot of people reach out to me and say, Rev, what about you? Are you going to be okay? You've covered Niji Sanji in the past. And yes, I have. And I've, like others, privated all of my Niji Sanji related videos, except for the most recent ones. And really, I think including this video, I will have three total Niji Sanji videos. One where Niji Sanji is only the focus of three minutes out of the total 17 minutes of the video. And then of course my Kyo video and this current one, which notice I don't show a single VTuber from their agency in the entire entirety of both videos. The closest thing I show is their logo on their public Twitter page. So if they want to strike me for that, I, I guess uh, challenge accepted, but I, I highly doubt they would do that. And, you know, again, I'm confident if something would happen, I would win in the end. Just like I'm confident Kyo and False will succeed as well because these strikes are... They're, they're fraudulent, and they're not going to win. And I, I guarantee they're not going to file legal action against these two people, or anyone for that matter, in this situation, in this particular situation, because they don't have a leg to stand on. Like I said, these are not the actions of a confidence agency. These are the actions of a desperate agency, one that is seeing their bottom line shrinking and thinks that silencing negative stories about their creators is going to save their reputation, when in reality, it's having the exact opposite effect. And like I said, I don't want to beat this to death, but speak out against this. It's not right. I don't care about your personal views of any of the people involved. I don't feel comfortable with Niji Sanji and any color playing judge, jury, and executioner over who gets to have a platform and who gets to talk about their content creators and how they get to talk about those content creators. It's not right. I'm not going to stand for it and let them know, let them know that they're in the wrong for this. But, uh, I appreciate the listen. I know this was a lot and I'll put all the related links in the description. Go show support to the people involved. Let me know all your thoughts about this in the comments section down below. I hope this was informative and helpful. Hope you enjoy the video as well. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.